What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the PS5 career mode, this is episode number 61. And we start today's episode off with a brief look at the Premier League table as you can see. Three games to go in the season for us as you see Ben White after the broken toe he suffered in our defeat to Leon in the last game. The last episode is going to miss the remainder of the season and the start of next year he's out for three months. Three games to go in the Premier League table right now for us. One game for Liverpool in third and two for Man City in first. Yes, very confusing indeed with uh, some teams playing more than others but right now as you can see or as you would have seen by the way uh, just a moment ago there, sorry, uh, we are currently two points behind Manchester City with the game in hand. Liverpool now, after we beat them in the last episode, we know their chance of winning the Premier League title is gone. Mathematically it's all over for Klopp's side, but now it's a two-horse race. Us versus Manchester City, and because we have that game in hand, it does mean if we win our remaining three coming in today's episode, we win the Premier League title. No pressure. But of course, we know the three Premier League, uh, Premier League games remaining are very tough ones, and we start off with Chelsea in a West London derby away at Stanford. Stanford Bridge and of course you know they'd love to prevent us from winning the Premier League title after they won it all the way back in season one so I knew on the back of the defeat to Leon as well it was going to be hard to pick the boys up after bottling a place in the Europa League final and just 24 minutes in the worst possible start Callum Hudson-Odoi drills Chelsea into a one goal lead and I was thinking oh my word here we go. We just bottled the Europa League and we're going to bottle the Premier League as well. Ten minutes later, tried to respond and get back on level terms. Jonathan David rolled through one on one, but it's a great save by Chesney as the polling goal makes a really important stop on the one on one. Still nil nil. But after Chelsea's goal, we sort of woke up. We didn't really start the game off at all. And once Chelsea got that opening goal, it was sort of like, I don't know how to explain it really, like poking the bear really. We started waking up. We started playing at a higher tempo with two minutes to go before the break. We had a golden chance and we took it as well. I spurned the one early but this time I got it right and I must say my heart was beating like crazy in the build up there as you would have seen I thought I played one extra pass thankfully managed to get it right a Brett Gize fed the ball through after Jonathan David splits the defense a lovely two-man game between the pair there and a Brett G all alone six yards out or seven yards out really wasn't going to miss 1-1 and we're back on level terms but we knew a draw would not be good enough the only way we could return to the top of the table with two games to go was to win this game in hand in the second half we had a golden chance to take the lead for the first time and I totally blew it with guess who Charles Ball, a Brett Gize denied by Chesney, fabulous save by the former Juve goalkeeper and as it dropped to Charles on the rebound goal gave and I thought surely this will be the goal to get us in front and Salisu blocks it on the line but from the bowl out we managed to win the ball out through Omar get possession back in our favour and just seconds after I blew a golden chance and I was literally cursing in my bedroom, we got the chance to get back in front and this time I did not spurn it. Charles has added goals to his game this year. 21 in the Premier League this season. But we know his best asset is not scoring goals. It's getting assists, finding the open man and picking the right pass. Exactly what he does there. He wasn't greedy, he wasn't selfish, and he knew, despite wanting to make amends, it was best to find the open man in a better position. He did that, rolled it off to a Brett Gize, quick little first touch there with a former Crystal Palace playmaker, and bends it in at the near post to score what would prove to be the game winner. It was Robin's game, not Batman's this time. Final score, Chelsea won QPR 2, and we said it many times before. This is Charles' team now, but every star needs a right hand man and that is a Brecci Eze. What a man of the match display from the uh, former Crystal Palace man. His two goals see us turn the game on its head and win the game in West London. What was, i got to be honest here, my most tense game of FIFA in I don't even know how many months man. Seriously that was so, so dramatic and as you can see, despite winning the game unfortunately we remain in second place. Yes, unfortunately at Craven Cottage Fulham who are already relegated to be fair rock bottom of the table. They were powerless to resist Manchester City. They win that game so it means still, still we're in second place. Despite all these wins, we're still in second place. And the game in hand we would have once again would come in midweek at home to Burnley in our final game at the Kind Prince Foundation Stadium this season here against Sean Dyche's Claret, who right now are looking like they'll survive, but it's not over yet. So taking on Burnley, they needed the points, as did we heading into this game, and then this would be the game in hand on the final day with all our 37 games played, and that would be on the weekend. So heading into the game, I made quite a few changes. My team are absolutely gassed. 
fast. As you can imagine at this point, after so many games, particularly of all those Europa League knockout ties as well. And I was trying to just will the ball into the back of the net in the first half, but really, really struggling. We had the chances, but the finishes weren't the best. And again, the final balls were also lacking a little bit. I just didn't have really, really any clear-cut chance in the first half. And so at the break, I thought, right, it's time to go for this man. A draw, and we surely surrender the title. Let's go 4 one 2 one 2 wide. Get Johnny Boy some service up top and get an extra striker on the pitch. I bought Charlie Kelman off the bench and just seven minutes after the restart. It's the Yankee Doodle, Charlie Kelman, sent through one-on-one. -on -one. One of the season one OGs and our number 29 fires us into the lead. QPR 1, Burnley nearly runs all the way to me, with me to celebrate on the sidelines there. And Kelman, we love him so much. We sent him to France as a boy. He returned as a man. Charlie Kelman, biggest goal of his career, puts us in front in a penultimate game of the season. And finally, the deadlock is broken just after the restart. So QPR 1, Burnley nil. It's the Yank with the goal. And with 13 minutes to go, looking to get a second goal and wrap these points up. But he was a little bit poor in the first half, I'll be honest. But 12 minutes to go, you can't stop this. This guy when he sees the red tape on his hand. Charles Ball sent through by what was an absolutely incredible performance on the night from Cameron Wilkinson. The Academy boys linking up and how cool it was in the penultimate game of the season. It wasn't our £125 million signing in Jonathan David. It wasn't the star players we bought in, but the guys that combined for our second goal of the game, Academy graduates, Wilkinson to Ball. Brilliant back heel by Cameron and Charles does the rest. 2-0 the final score. Charles wraps up the points and that that means, finally, we return to top of the table with a game to spare. Only a win would do. We had to win it. I made the tactical change of the break. It could have backfired spectacularly, but instead, it sees us pick up the three points, which means on the final day, the Premier League table looks like this. One win for Queen's Park Rangers, and we are Premier League champions. Man City are home to Wolves at the Etihad. They've got nothing to play for right now, sat in mid-table today. No, that they'll surely go get it. They're surely going to win that game there, and that'll mean we have to match their result once again. The top four is set. The the Magpies have guaranteed the Europa League play, so fair play to them. And as for the bottom three as well, that's confirmed too. Watford leads Fulham. So on the final day, Spurs themselves were playing for a Europa League spot on the final day and would, uh, would probably need the points as well in North London to make sure they have European football of some kind at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium next season. But for us, the stakes far greater. We've matched Manchester City every step of the way in the previous weeks and now it's the final hurdle to clear in North London at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium win and we are Premier League champions for the first time. Thank you for attending today's Enjoy the game. Well I have bottled things in the past, don't get me wrong, but this would be a different feeling I feel to go all this way and then lose on the final day. I'll be pretty goddamn devastated if it happens. And I must say, I'm feeling very nervous indeed. Spurs are so hard to beat on this game, especially away from home. With that man, Harry Kane, starting as well. He scores against me practically every single game. So, yeah, feeling feeling nervous. But as McKenny finds the ball... Johnny, I see ya! Whoa, what a save! <sighs> David De Gea... Denies Johnny Boy. Fingertip stopped by the Spaniard. Richards to McKenney. Look the better team to start this game off here. He's, he's got the ball with him. Ah! Charles, why'd you step in field, bro? There was so much space down the left hand side. It's okay. It's alright. Get back to you here. And now into Richards with the 1 2. There we go. He's much better when attacking down the left and then stepping in field. Oh, I couldn't find an open red shirt in the middle. Blocked. And it'll be clear by Cameron. Still 0-0, half an hour in. It's been all QPR. And Man City have just taken the lead through Benjamin Pavard in the northwest as well. And we knew it. We knew it. To win this title, we'd need to win this game. Come on. No. Oh, Mepham. I love Chris Mepham, man. He's absolute brick wall in this game. Oh, it's a perfectly timed through ball. Oh, yes! to Robin get in come on oh. spurned the chance earlier through David 
the, the decision was right to play the ball across to our number nine. The execution was perfect. The save was bad, but this time De Gea can't get a touch on it, and he's a squeeze it home to give us the lead. He was big at Stamford Bridge. He's a big game player. Final day, opening goal. Spurs nil. QPR one. Come on! Well, there we go. First half done. It's been all QPR. Spurs have had a couple of opportunities when coming forward. Thankfully, the final ball has been lacking and they haven't found the opening. The Bullers look fantastic. He's got the assist for opening goal. It's a Brett Hughes fight in front, but it's 45 minutes to go. I'm taking nothing for granted. Got to stay composed. It's far from over. Goal update. Etihad Stadium. Ah, well, it's over now. We knew it would be, though. It was Reese James released down the right. Dinks it to McKenney on the edge in the header. Is easily caught by De Gea. Yeah, 2 0 Man City. It's over there. We knew, though, I said a couple of times ago, to win this title, we need to win every single game. But it's not over yet. Oh, ball. Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh. I don't know if we're going to need a second goal, but I'd certainly feel confident with one. Just over for Obrecci. And still the lead is one. I might try and keep the ball in the deck a little bit as Omar's just gone down after an aerial duel. Stayed down as well. And oh, he's getting back to his feet as Man City go freeing it up on Wolves there. But of course, goal difference won't matter as we are still going to be, as things stand, a point clear of them to win the title. And as he's a finds John Boy. Oh, De Gea again! One of the best attempts, to be fair, straight to Spaniard, but anyway, he stood his ground and made the stop. We should be three goals up here. If we don't win this title, there's only one man to blame, and it's me. Goal kick, thank you. Indeedy to Kane. I'm scrambling a little bit here. Red shirts aren't exactly positioned well as Andy tackles Harry Kane. I've done such a good job of keeping him quiet in this game. Andy and McKenney have been really crucial in the defensive midfield positions. So we spread the play from right to left. Here. I see Bull down that left. That's a brilliant ball by Weston. Oh, off the post! Go on, Andy, have a dig. Blocked. And that should trickle out for a throw. Off the post from the ball. I could see Spurs nicking a lever in stoppage time, man. Come on. This is it. One final chance for Spurs. We've got one minute of stoppage time to play across. You come, Cameron. Oh, I love Cameron Wilkinson. So solid, but it's not over yet. Ref, come on, blow for the full-time whistle. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yes! Oh, there go the subs. Yes! Season 5, Premier League Champions, Queens, Park Rangers. We held our nerve all the way to the end. Matched every City, Manchester City win. Oh, oh my God. The Chelsea game was the most nerve-wracking. We should have had this one sewn up at half-time. You know what? It's over. QPR, Premier League winners, get in. You know, I have to say, as you see the celebrations here in the picture and picture, I'm kind of frustrated I didn't win this game by more clear goals because we certainly should have done. You'll see the statistics on the screen as well as the celebrations in the bottom right too. Spurs did not have a single shot in the entire game, but again, the, the reason why is that once again, we were absolutely amazing at the back, and especially our holding mids too, Andy Rinomotta and Cameron Wilkinson, who came off the bench, and Weston McKenney, I should say, who started alongside the captain. Rinomotta was the highest rated player, and of course, the, uh, the man of the match, Metham, again, you would have seen, was an absolute machine in the game. And what I love is the fact that whilst our offence has become so much better, um, you know, the, the past couple of seasons, and this season in particular, what I absolutely love is that we haven't lost our identity. We're a defence-minded club. And so it makes total sense that on the final day away against Spurs, it's not really the goals that win it for us, although of course you need to score goals to win football games. It's again mainly due to the defence. And what's that old saying? Defence wins championships. And they certainly have in this case here. One or the final score, absolutely buzzing. And it's over. It's over. We've won our first Premier League title to go along with the FA Cup we won back in Season 3. We still have the FA Cup final to come. That will be coming in the very next episode. That will be the season finale for Season 5. And of course, as we know, next season we'll be going to the Champions League for the first time ever. But I hope this is just the start for us. We've won our first ever Premier League title. 
but I want more to come. I really do. We've we've made our name for ourselves in the FA Cup. Thankfully, Rich's injury, we just see that was a five-day injury. But in the Premier League now, I want to become the best team in England. Hopefully, hopefully, as time goes on, become the best team in Europe as well. So it is over. Queen's Park Rangers, Premier League champions. Hopefully, I see the little news article um, thing here. Where is it? Is, is there one? There's not. There's not. Oh, what? Seriously? Why is there no? It should be there. It should be right there. Either way, but uh, still, that's it then. Queen's Park Rangers, Premier League champions. I'll quickly show you the uh, the league table, but I think in the season finale, I'll go through the uh, the, the, the sort of the the in depth uh, season recap as well, including the Golden Boot winners and the top assist clean sheets and the squad hub as well, so on and so forth. But there you go. We win it by a point in the end. 27 wins in 38 games, 89 points. We were the league's best scorers this season. Oh, no, we weren't second best. Uh, Arsenal won it with 74. I say Arsenal won it. Arsenal, won, uh, Arsenal had the most goals with 74. But again, 20 goals conceded all season long. Best defensive record, best goal difference, top four set. Newcastle are in the Europa League next year. Fair play to them alongside Manchester United and Chelsea. As we are, for the first time, Premier League champions as we'll be going for a domestic dub with the season finale coming out tomorrow. The final episode of Season 5 as we aim to win two major honours in one season and wrap up what has been an amazing Season 5. So that were today's episode of the PS5 career mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed this incredibly thrilling, dramatic end to the Premier League season in Season 5. If you have, then please drop a like. Much love to you all. And I will see you for the official season finale, the FA Cup final, our third in four years as we face Brighton, aiming to reclaim it pick up a domestic double very soon come on you are mate i'm buzzing that was quality